All right, lads, it's Lana, and I am joined today by Ben Taylor, aka the Magic Mod. We are in Northern Ireland, Belfast, right close to the Titanic Museum, and this is a little bit makeshift today because I'm filming on the GoPro. It's fucking pouring it down outside. It's literally a thunderstorm, and we are taking shelter in the car. So this is as homemade and makeshift as it gets, but we're here to provide the content. <laughs> this is back to bases, isn't it, eh? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is what people don't see. Normally it's like in a studio and fancy lights and stuff I like know. that. This is like... I know, I've actually been levelling up my content recently. I've got a new camera crew and that, so yeah, this oh, is just... On. This is uh, getting back to what is, I don't know, humbling. Humbling, this is me trying to do it on my own again. <laughs> I normally just get my mum to film it, you know. Oh, I mean, do you? Yeah, 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 she's spot on. Should have gave her a call to be fair, she'd have been straight down here. So we've had this, well, podcast style, chatty YouTube video planned for a while now because I booked, I booked this trip to go to the 12, like a month ago, maybe just over a month ago. So do you want to tell us about your podcast and like what you're about and what you do? Obviously your name's The Magic Mod. Yeah, so I mean, uh, magician. I've been doing magic since I was about six years old and then turned professional till I was about 18 and then did it full time when I was 21. So it happened like all in a, do you know what I mean? A real flash. Started off doing football. I thought I was going to be good at that. It turned out I was um, not as good as I thought in my head. So I ended up being a magician, the next best thing, eh? <laughs> But, I, I, I couldn't make it as a footballer so no, I became a magician. No, exactly right. I had <laughs> dreams of playing for Fulham and everything, mate, but it, yeah, it didn't happen, so I just ended up doing the magic. And when I first started, I used to do it at like my family parties and stuff like that. And then mm -hmm. the next thing you know, I'm getting people who have seen me online, like Steve Craddock, Miles Kane, Paul Weller, the uh, Stone Roses, they, they've seen my content and they go, well, he's unique because there isn't someone doing it who's like really influenced in the music. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So my style is like mod, you know, uh, people who don't know about that, there's such bands as The Who, uh, The Jam, you know, like real good 60s sort of culture, you know, mm -hmm. and I was brought up on that. Did you not tour with like Baby Shambles or the, no, the Libertines? Yeah, that's it. So I did, uh, uh, first tour I really did was with Paul Weller and I did uh, four nights, uh, three nights with him. And then after that, I got a, um, I was doing a show, funny enough, in London uh, for Virgin Radio and I had a missed call from Carl Barrett from the Libertines. Mm -hmm. And it was like half 11 at night. I thought, what's going on here? Does he want to go on a session or something? So anyway, I rang him back and Pete Dockett actually answered. It's the mm -hmm. first time I've ever spoke to him. And uh, he just said, we want you on tour. And I was like, well, when's it start? He said, tomorrow, we're in Glasgow. I was like, oh no, I'm in London at the moment. And Pete's last words were, listen, mate, every bottle they throw at your head, it's a symbol of love. They love you, right? <laughs> and I was like, oh, hang about, where are you that next week? That sounds like Glasgow, to be fair. <laughs> That sounds like Glasgow. <laughs> and then I did, I did the uh, the week after I went and we the first show of the tour I did with them was in Warrington Par Hall. Amazing. So I did them and then I did uh, Reverend and the Makers, did a tour with them and then I went back on tour with Pete Doherty and then I did another thing with the Libertines uh, uh, and then more recently, well January, February, I did a three month tour or a three week tour. So you're still doing the magic now? Yeah, yeah, yeah? still doing it. That's still the only thing I'm good at, mate. <laughs> It's the only thing I'm good at. And doing your podcast. Well, yeah, we're doing it. So, so I started off, as I said, with the magic. It's the only thing I love to do. But then I've been doing a lot of podcasts. Like I did the most recent one I did was uh, Menace to Sobriety with Dapper Laughs, and he got me on that. So, yeah, talking of the session, talking of throwing bottles and all the rest of it. So the reason that me and Ben started talking in the first place a few months ago and arranging this was because I believe you saw some of my content about so sobriety um possibly you might have seen a bit of my podcast that i did um for flip the mindset but yeah that's exactly it ben saw... is sober so a few months ago well six months ago i started my just over six months ago actually i started my sobriety journey and i have to say i have been slightly nervous about today because i know that we were going to talk about sobriety and i do have a confession and it is that i have recently fell off it a little bit but i did manage to do six months my, my initial plan was to do a year and to go from there, but I actually went to work in a club. Um, I don't know if you saw my Insta, but I went to work in a dancing club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it must have just been a huge fucking trigger for me because that's when I started. Basically, when I used to live in Magaluf ages ago and I was dancing, I was drinking every night. And then, because I was hung over the next day, I was drinking, like, I just basically, for the six months that I was there, I was drinking all the time. And I don't know, I think it was it was a mix of 
having hit six months mm. and somehow in my head I thought, ah, that's good enough. Maybe let's just call it a day now with that. So that, that evil little devil on my shoulder was a bit like, you know, and then obviously the trigger of the strip club and... So yeah, that is my confession too. And I've been well, really nervous me, about... No, do you know what? Because right? I was like, I still want to do the podcast no. and I still want to like... So let me... Let me but yeah, me, I've been so... Sorry, let me just finish. But I've been so public about my journey with sobriety that when I drank, it was a few weeks ago now, I was like, fuck, like I feel like I need to tell everyone. And I spoke to one of my friends, Kaz, about it. And he went, Lana, it's nobody's business, like whether you drink or not. And like, you know, you're an adult woman. It's not against the law. Like you can do it if you want. But like, because I always wear my heart on my sleeve so much on social media and I share so much with people I just feel like I had to address it but I'm really glad that I'm addressing it now with you because yeah. now we can kind of talk about it so so like, yeah first of all, <laughs> sorry no, that's good like, let me tell you something first of all right it's, the, the fact that you're doing it and we're, we're filming and you've mentioned it to me mm -hmm. that, that proves that you're you know you've owned up you said you know what I, I did want to do it more I wanted to get a year but I haven't got a confession so you should be yeah. proud of yourself that you've owned up to Thank it you could have lied I about am, it yeah well, I didn't want to lie. No, but, but, but some people do. <laughs> yeah. and I've seen it. I've seen it. I've caught people out. Now, the thing is, the whole journey, like when I hit six months, I knew, like, oh, brilliant. I've hit six months. Similar to what you thought, I've done six months. Now I've proved I can do it. Do I do? But you have to keep the same mindset of, no, because as soon as I go, I know for a fact, as soon as I have another drink, it'll be the biggest party I've ever had in my life. As I yeah. said in that podcast I did before, why I'm in this sobriety, my addiction is doing press-ups, because that's what it was, I was addicted. I loved, I loved to have a drink. I, I wouldn't drink every single day, but I needed it because you come off that stage after performing in front of two, three, four, five, whatever, a thousand people, mm -hmm. you need to keep that buzz. What do you get? You get a bit of, you have a bit of gear and you have a drink. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, it's like, I relate it, to that as well. Like, having obviously because I, I hadn't stripped for a while over lockdown and stuff and I wanted to do it because I thought it was like a safe environment to like actually kind of meet people that support me yeah and I mean when I say it, I packed that strip club like it was packed like I was upstairs in VIP and there was people that came in and they were to see me and left disappointed because I was so busy and I couldn't meet everyone but obviously that with that comes a lot of pressure like as much as I'm so flattered and I feel like, wow, that's amazing, I'm so popular. But it's like, that's a lot of people that I need to feel like I'm being bubbly and happy and crazy, Lana. And like, back, especially back when, in my Magaluf days, when I started drinking heavily, that was my whole personality, was like party girl. And I feel like a lot of the time as well, like even over my journey, like being back in the UK and like social media and like going viral and stuff like that, a lot of it was, oh gosh, sorry, the car just did its own thing there. <laughs> But like a lot of like, you know, Lana Wolf crazy moments have all been around being drunk and being crazy and like, woo, yellow. And um, it was like a big part of, it became like a part of like my brand essentially or my personality, um, which obviously isn't good. But I think, yeah, just going back, um, being in that setting, um, it was just a big, a big trigger. And because I'd already hit the six months, I thought, ah, oh, fuck it. But you know, I only stuck to WKD, but still it's not the point because it's like, it's not the point though, is it? No, no. But because I thought, I thought my tolerance is, is you know, going to be so bad. I'll just fucking drink WKD. A lot of people might say, ah, fuck WKD. But to me, it does count because I know that I drank to get a buzz, so. But the thing is, like you said, similar to a story to me, you know, you felt like you had to live up to that reputation. You yeah. Know, of the, like, the crazy girl. I didn't know how it would be interesting without him. But no matter what, no matter what you do, people love you and support you because it's you. It doesn't matter if you if you're high off your face or if you're pissed. People support you because it's you. They love what you do. Mm. So you don't have to be. It's similar to Pete Doherty, right? He mm. used to think that people used to love seeing him when he was at his lowest because mm. oh, it's Pete Doherty. He's pissed up. But people will love him no matter what. You know, it's like I thought the same thing when before I started this journey. I thought exactly the same. I thought people love to see me when I'm sort of like off me nut and that because I'm like our oh, rock and roll's favourite magician. Mm. It's, do you know what? They're gonna love you no matter what. If people support you and support your journey, it doesn't matter how you are. You could be sober, you can be off your nut. People will always support you. Now the next question is, how do you want to do the next journey? Do you want to? Do you want to go sober or do you want to just lay off it a bit? Or, see, I'm see, not. What's the... Well, I haven't yet gone off the rails in the sense of I've got smashed, mm. but. One thing that I have noticed is that luckily I haven't got my hands on the white stuff, but when I do drink, I start fiending for that. And it's that that's the, the thing that I really don't want to touch. So it's like, I almost just want to be sober because of that. Like, yeah. 
but also there were so many benefits to being sober and obviously as you've seen i've started playing football yeah and like i, I tend to hyper focus on things and i feel like a few years ago it was like right i want to be a big oaf girl um, you know, and I fucking worked my ass off, made loads and loads of adult content, you know, made a name for myself on that, and I'm kind of bored of that. <laughs> so now I'm doing like other things like YouTube and stuff, and I've got people helping me. Obviously, I still do my adult content, but I tend to kind of do it in a different way. Like, I go abroad and I do like amazing collabs and then shoot loads of stuff, and then I kind of, you know, um, stagger it. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not shooting that content every day, although it might look like that on my OF or on my Twitter or whatever. Mm. But most of the time I'm kind of working on my social media, YouTube and football. So I started playing football a year ago, maybe, maybe just over a year ago, because I started getting invited to charity matches and then this um, new, brand new women's team popped up and it was owned by the guy, Kenny Mackay, who does the Flip the Mindset podcast. And I thought, God, well, of, of all people that might let me join a team, it might be him, you know? Because I thought, oh, being a, being a porn star, nobody's going to want me on a team. And obviously, having very little experience. I think to practice for some charity matches, I'd hired a PT, but, like, you know, it was just so I could throw a pass together kind of thing. But um, he, like, welcomed me with open arms. And now, fast forward a year, I've earned actual minutes in the preseason friendlies and like I need to keep my Sundays free now to play because he wants to get me minutes when I can so I've actually got to it mean, I mean as soon as I've officially played for a proper league game I technically am a semi-pro footballer <laughs> which is insane right but I, I've been so hyper focused on that behind the scenes that like that is one thing that's really motivating me because I can't remember what it was but I think I'd so, re you know, it was recently because I had a few drinks at Transmit Festival and then the next day I had football and I managed to go and all the rest of it. But I did think I was like, see if I hadn't have drank yesterday. And it wasn't that huge amount, but still I had to drink. And I was like, I wonder how my performance would have been today. Mm -hmm. And I have that feeling and now I'm just like, it's not worth it. I just don't want to, to do it. I mean, I, I know Transmit's kind of like once a year thing. But like that, I don't want to get in the habit of drinking every Saturday when I've got football on Sunday. So like I know now, and as well working in the the dancing clubs, I know if right if that's gonna be somewhere that I know I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna have to not go to them unfortunately because I don't want to drink before football. So at least the football's like keeping me keeping me like straight. Yeah, you know, kind yeah. Of. Well, that's it. You got to have like an incentive. I mean, my my biggest inspiration, the reason that I keep myself sober, is my family, mm -hmm. and because I want the best version of myself, not only for my my boy and my amazing partner, but for my my career as well. You know, I want people to see just how good I actually am. Because I mean, yeah. I worked endlessly at, at the talent. You know, it doesn't just come like that you know you, I, don't, I didn't just read a book and all of a sudden I started doing magic tricks it's took me a long time to get to this level so why now I'm at the top of my game and don't get me wrong there's people out there who haven't got a clue who I am but you know I don't do it for that I do it because I love it do mm -hmm. you know what I mean and, and I've been like, like a lot of people have said if I was a band supporting the people that I've supported people go bloody hell he's done alright but being a magician people don't associate a magician going on tour with a band and it's, it's absolutely unheard of you know, I the know, only person who's done it, Dynamo did, I think he did one night with Ian Brown once. I've, I've done countless nights with bands. I'm not comparing myself to Dynamo, it's totally different because we're, we're two different styles, do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? What he does is phenomenal and he's great and I wish him all the best, but my style's a bit like putting, you know, imagine putting Liam Gallagher, uh, Paul Daniels, uh, Tommy Cooper and, I don't know, let's say Paul Weller together, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get the magic mod. You put them four people together and you get me. And that's, that's what I like to represent. And I show people that, yeah, I've still got that cockiness and that arrogance about my act. But, you know, at least I know that when I walk off that stage, I'm going to keep it sober. And I'm now enjoying it more than I ever have. You know, I walk off and I remember what I've done. Yeah. First tour I've done, like when, I, when I did that Libertines one, it's like flashbacks now. And then I think, I think, I, I think I've done this. And then I have to look on my phone and go, oh, yeah, we definitely played there. You know, if I didn't have a phone, I wouldn't remember where we played because I just treated it as a party. You know, because Libertines are like heroes of mine, you know, mm -hmm. and to call them friends and like, well, to call them brothers, because that's exactly what we were on tour. We were a family. But um, I think it got to me a bit on, on backstage because I had my own dressing room and I was on my own and I was sort of taking it all in and I was a bit lonely. I'm not going to lie. And next thing you do, you just end up drinking yourself mm -hmm. to, until you're absolutely obliterated. I remember I was doing bottles of Jack Daniels and all sorts and, 
yeah, it looks cool, doesn't it, at the time? But then you look back and you go, Jesus, why was I doing that? You know what I mean? I, yeah, I, I, the real, yeah, one of the main reasons that I had to go sober, like had to, was because, so I've never officially given myself the title of alcoholic, I've never given that, I never went to AA or anything like that, but I was going to get into that point where, you know, the, the littlest thing could trigger me off, like, like you said, like loneliness, being left on my own, maybe being rejected or something like that, like, certain things would trigger me and I, I was literally on this really, really self-destructive spiral where I was like, falling out with people and like people that I was like working with so it was like affecting my job um I was getting blocked by people because I was getting like weird <laughs> like like the, like the next day when I'm hanging and like feeling shit and like Ugh. and like I don't know like I, I tend to get a bit like I don't know I'm just not the best person when I'm on it like that that much but I was using a lot a lot of drugs as well so my brain chemicals were just like crazy and like the last argument that I had was with um, my mum and that was the one that I was like, right, I'm never drinking again. I, I, and I see now I'm disappointed in myself because I've started drinking again, but I'll never ever drink around family ever again because I just wouldn't, like, I know that for a fact. Um, but I did get help from a charity that gave me like counseling for like a year before I actually finally did the six months. But yeah, not, sorry, I've lost my train of thought. Not Sorry, I lost my train of thought there a little bit, so I had to do a cut. And um, my camera's actually kind of low battery, and because we're in the middle of a car, in a car park, it's not the not the best. So we're gonna have to do some sort of a wee outro now. But uh, yeah, so I've come clean. I did break my sobriety. I'm very, very sorry to everybody uh, that was rooting for me to do the whole year. Um, I, did do, I did manage to do six months, and I am really proud of that. Um, and then as for the future, I really don't want to go back to being a total wreckhead like I was and I feel like my mindset has definitely, definitely changed for the better. I've seen all the benefits of leading a sober lifestyle and I'm very, very focused on football and I'm hoping that that's going to keep me right. Um, and I just need to avoid wet places, I think they say, <laughs> if I want to, uh, you know, stay off it. I hope this video wasn't like too negative. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't but it's kind of hard because it's like although yeah I mean I said this earlier on but my friend was like why are you even addressing it because it's nobody's business but I do feel like I want to keep you as like updated with what's going on because I was so public about it and I was overwhelmed with all the support that I got and like other people like relating as well like everybody could relate and I don't want to send out the wrong message that you should go back to if you are sober I don't want to send out the wrong message like oh if Lana's drinking again and she's fine then no like I am all for a sober lifestyle, but I just seem to have fell off recently. But once I've hit, I might keep it a bit more private from now on because I do find it quite difficult to talk about. But once I've hit another milestone, you guys will be the first people that I tell, I promise. Like, you know, if I hit like three months or something, you'll know about it because I'll probably tell you. But it just makes it all up more difficult. One thing I will say, though, the reason that I do go public with it sometimes is because I don't think that without the accountability of telling my followers, I don't think I would have done the six months. So really, like, thank you for letting me kind of talk about my sobriety with you because I would never have been able to do it if I didn't have the accountability from folk. So, yeah, and... Uh, would you like to say anything else? No, no, totally. That was a bit agree. of a long outro. No, not really. You know, because I mean, <laughs> you, a lot of people would say, oh, you failed and that, but it ain't like that at all because a failure, if you fail, it means you've learned nothing. But I'm sure in the six months that you've done mm -hmm. and then when you did fall off that you've learned a mm -hmm. little bit more so you know what not to do the next time. Yeah, I would, n I would not be a footballer now and been given the chance from my coach to play actual minutes in a game if I hadn't have earned my place. And that's because I've been working out like a fucking fitness freak, doing like loads and loads of football training, like extracurricular football and everything, um, which I would never have been able to do if I was drinking as much as in the past. And I mean, you relate because you've learned all your magic. Yeah, 100%, being yeah. sober as well. And I mean, the thing, as I said, you know, keep yourself focused and keep something in the back of your head. and. This, as I said, the reason I'm doing it is for my family and for the people who support the Magic Mod, because I'm, and I know I'm not going to uh, really fail, because the reason is I've got too much to live for now. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And before, I think I was f trying to find my way in life. I was thinking, well, what's the whole meaning? Why am I here? What's this? And that's that. And when it just clicked, that's it. And I tell you, like since, as I said, I'm a year and a year and two months or something. No, year and a thirty months. Sorry, miles mm -hmm. away then, when I sound out. But it's like. 
I had the best 13 months of my life because I, I weren't depending on where's the next drink, where's mm -hmm. the next line or something like that. And it's the most amazing feeling. And you get more money in your Changes well. your life. I oh, 100%. So guys, listen, if you're interested in changing your life and uh, you're not going sober, Magic Mod here has got plenty of content like that <laughs> on his podcast. Um, so yeah, thank you so much nice for one. being so supportive as well. No, like he was right. one of the people that was like, go Lana, you're smashing it. Uh, but yeah, uh, listen, I hope I haven't disappointed you. But no, not at all, not at I'll all. Keep you, I'll keep you updated on my, uh, my journey. And guys, we're going to do some magic tricks now. So keep an eye on our TikToks. You've got something for me, <laughs> yeah? You've been learning well, some. Well, not really. Oh, no. I've got a few bad dad jokes for you. But anyway, thank you for watching. Nice one. Bye.